Hey everyone, welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be making a bag that might be one of the most popular designs over the summer. I love this look so much. Today, we're making the Pebble Mini Sling Crossbody Backpack Bag, and this comes to us from Can Do Patterns. Okay. Obviously, somebody just saw the Mario movie, which is why I was inspired to make this bag. It is so much fun. Look at this vinyl and how it changes color. I love this so much. But this bag, it is a mini sling bag. And I'm going to say it's pretty beginner friendly. I did not find this bag to be that challenging to make. So let's walk through all the details and all the different ways you can wear this bag. First, we have this adorable front little zip pocket. Oh, I love it so much. Just a cute little, little guy. On the back here, we have a slip pocket. So that's a great place to put your phone. On the top, we have a double zip. So let's open that up. And then on the inside, we have binding for the lining and we also have a slip pocket. Now I'll show you right now, this bag is set up to be worn as a backpack. You see, we have two straps right here and we have this little connector right there. You could also wear it as a sling simply by taking off one of the straps, just like this, done. And now it's a sling. See, it'll go right across your chest, however you wanna wear it. If you wanna wear it like this or if you wanna wear it on your back, it's a cute little sling. Or you could instead wear it as a crossbody. So remove that strap and now connect the strap to the side D-rings. And if you're like, hey, but what about this little flaily guy here? No worries, there's a little snap. You could use magnets if you want, or you could use a snap like I did. And all you do, snap it shut like that. Now, you can hang a little hand sanitizer holder here, whatever you like, and it's just a cute little accent on your bag. How stinking cute is that? Now we have a crossbody. Oh my gosh, I love this bag so much. <laughs> All right, so let's see what this bag looks like on. So the hardest thing about this bag, honestly, I feel like is determining the strap lengths. Because if you're gonna be wearing it as a crossbody, you want longer straps. But if you're gonna be wearing it as a backpack, you want shorter straps. So I have some tips as we get to it on what lengths I like to use. But see, I'm gonna lengthen it out and wear it as a crossbody first. I like to wear it obviously across my body. You could also just wear it on your shoulder if you'd like. How cute is that? It's a great size crossbody. It's not too big, not too small. I'm just, this vinyl is just killing me because it looks black to me, but in the camera, it's just so rainbow. I love it. So you can see it's a nice, simple, small size crossbody, very just perfect for an everyday bag. So now let's try the sling option. So I'm gonna take one of my connectors, snap open this top piece here, connect it to the top, take my other swivel hook down here and connect it to the bottom just like that. And now I'm gonna shorten the strap because it's a little long for me. And now I can wear it like this so that it goes across my body like that and then it's on the back, kind of like a backpack or I can wear it across the front of my body which is probably how I would wear it honestly, more like this. So it's on the front of my body and then the back strap just goes across my back like that. So that's option number two. Now option number three is to grab another strap and make it a backpack. So I'm gonna leave the strap I already have on and I'm going to attach another strap to the top D-ring up here and then the other swivel hook down to the other bottom D-ring just like that. I'm gonna shorten my straps as much as they'll go because they are a little long for me. And that's the nice thing about this bag is that if you have multiple people you're gonna wanna share this bag with, like maybe sometimes you're wearing it, maybe sometimes your kiddo's wearing it, maybe sometimes somebody else in the family's wearing it, you can have different straps for everybody. You can have straps that are longer, straps that are shorter. Since you can take them off, you can change them out. So here's what a backpack looks like on the front. And then here's what it looks like on the back. How stinking cute is that? I love that. Three ways to wear one bag. So thank you once again to Candy Patterns for allowing me to use your patterns on the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. If you've been here for a minute, you know that Candy Patterns are some of the most popular patterns on our channel. If you haven't checked out their patterns, go ahead and check out their Etsy shop. You can also check a playlist. We have lots and lots of videos for them. These little slings are just so cute and just the absolute perfect bag for summer, for travel, for fun. I don't know, I just love this. I can see college students using this as like their regular just bag bag and then they have like a messenger bag or they carry their books, you know what I mean? It's just a perfect size. It's something where you can, you can use it as an everyday bag, but it's not huge, it's not gonna hurt your back, it's not gonna kill your shoulder. I just love it. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. Are there other patterns you wanna see? Let me know. This one, this one has been highly requested. Highly, highly requested. So I was very excited and eager to make it. And now I wanna make so many more. 
Alrighty guys, let's get started. So for this pattern, you're gonna need about a half a yard of fabric for the exterior main of the bag, and then about a fat quarter of the contrast. So for the exterior main, I'm using this water resistant canvas. And then for the contrast, I'm gonna use this vinyl. Now the vinyl is only in a couple places. Uh, I would suggest a more lightweight vinyl, nothing too thick because we do have some tight curves that we're gonna be using the vinyl on with the bottom gusset. The more lightweight the material you're using, the better here. If you're using quilt cotton, make sure you are adding woven interfacing. I'm not using any woven interfacing today because I'm not using any quilt cotton today. And then for the lining, you're gonna need about three quarters of a yard of lining material. Again, I'm using water resistant canvas for that, so no woven interfacing here. And then you're gonna need about a third of a yard of fusible fleece. I was debating using Decoville Light instead of the fusible fleece today, but I do really like the softness that the fusible fleece adds and the structure. So I would suggest using the fusible fleece. And then you'll need about two and a quarter yards of binding. The pattern calls for a double fold bias binding, but I will be using this water resistant Oxford. I think that's what it's called. Um, this, you can also get water resistant canvas. This is like a pre-cut roll of one inch wide binding and I just sew it on on the inside. The bias binding with cotton woven material looks the best, but it does require a good amount of extra work. So this is just quick and easy. All right, you'll need at least 20 inches of zipper tape. I'm using a number five zipper tape. You're also gonna want two pulls to go for the main opening of the bag and then one zipper pull to go for that front zipper accent pocket. I'll be making the backpack version today, so I'll have at least three yards of webbing for the backpack straps. The pattern calls for one inch wide webbing. I actually only have one and a half inch wide webbing, so that's what I'm gonna be using. But because my webbing is one and a half inches wide, I have to make sure I'm using the right hardware. Now, I'm making two crossbody straps, but they're gonna be backpack straps. So I'm gonna need two sliders so I can make it adjustable. And these are gonna be one and a half inch wide, again, because of my webbing. And then I have four swivel hooks, all of them one and a half inch wide. And then I have five D-rings because I am going to add every single D-ring on this bag. You don't have to, if you know you're not gonna wear it as a backpack, you don't have to add the backpack D-rings. But I do want this bag to have all the options. So I have five one inch wide D-rings. And then I have my little bag tag here that I'll sew onto the front. And then I have some medium size rivets to go with my straps. I also have a metal fashion snap here. This is going to be to hold down the sling and backpack accent. Um, I didn't have a color that matches my material, so we're mixing up the hardware a lot today. But I have the male set and the female set so that I can have a snap. You can also use magnets if you want here. It's not gonna have a lot of pull on it, so it doesn't need to be a very strong seal whenever it's snapped together. So you can use magnets if that's easier. But then I also have the die set to go with that and then my rivet press and a hole punch. I have a whole video going over my rivet press and all the dies and everything I like to use with it. So I'll have that link down below. So here's a bunch of the other stuff I'll be using today. A bunch of clips as always, some double-sided tape that's easy to sew over and won't gum up my needle. And then I also have some paper tape here to hold things down whenever I'm going from my table to my sewing machine. I can also sew over this and don't have to worry about it gunking up my needle. A one inch by six inch ruler, a turning tool, two marking pens, one that's an air racing marking pen, and then one that is a silver ink pen, just cause you never know which one you're gonna need. A stiletto as always, a seam ripper stiletto combo, my lighter to clean up any loose threads. The thread I'm using on the top, which goes through my needle, is a Tex 45 weight thread. This is color Fairy Floss from Wizardry Stitchery. And then in the bobbin, I'm using a Guterman thread from Joann's. And my needle today is a Microtex 8012. So let's go through the pattern pieces. Pattern piece A is the back panel. So you're going to have a lining cut and an exterior cut. Neither of these have interfacing on them because they are water resistant canvas. If they are quilt cotton, you need to add woven interfacing to the entire panels. And then you're gonna have a smaller cut of your fusible fleece using these dash lines here. Now it can be fusible fleece or it can be Decoville light, just something to kind of give the bag a little bit more shape and structure. If you're using a vinyl for the exterior of this bag or even a wax canvas, I would say you could definitely skip the fusible fleece. So if this is a little bit thicker, you don't need the extra structure, you'll be fine without it. Pattern piece B is the slip pocket. You're gonna need one exterior cut of that and then three lining cuts. Next we have pattern piece C and pattern piece C has a lot going on on it so you need to pay attention to that. First you have your exterior cut and then you're gonna have your fusible fleece. And if you notice, I have cut the wrong side. I did this on the first bag, I did it on this bag. I always cut the wrong side. So whenever you're cutting this out, make sure your fusible fleece is glue side up. So your glue is up and then use this dashed line here to cut out that rectangle. 
and that's going to be for zipper installation. So not the inner one, the dashed rectangular line. That's what you want to cut out on the left side when the glue is facing up. I, I just, it doesn't matter how many times I make that mistake. So I'm just going to try to fuse this into that open spot over there. And then you're going to also need a cut of lining material. Pattern piece D is an accent front base panel. And I would say it is optional, but it is very cute. I'm using my vinyl for that. Next we have pattern piece E. This is your sling strap connector. You're going to need two cuts of this. I'll be using the vinyl. And then you're going to have a smaller cut using those dash lines of your fusible fleece. Pattern piece F are your front zipper pocket panels. This is two cuts of your lining material. Next up, we have pattern piece G. This is going to be one cut of your exterior, one cut of your lining. We're actually gonna cut both of these in half lengthwise. This is for the zipper. And then we have pattern piece H, which is your lower gusset. So this is going to be that accent piece. So for me, the vinyl, and then a cut of lining as well. And then a smaller cut of your fusible fleece or deck level light using those dash lines. And finally, a small cut of material here. This is what we're gonna use for the D-rings. So let's work on adhering our fusible fleece to our exterior material. So I'm gonna start with pattern piece H. So I have my vinyl cut here. I'm gonna lay my vinyl, I'm gonna diagonalize this. <laughs> I'm gonna lay my vinyl wrong side up and then I'm gonna center my fusible fleece over it. There should be about 3 8 of an inch around all the edges. You can measure if you like, I don't. And then because I have vinyl and I don't want to press the vinyl from the right side, I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm just gonna cover the back of it with some scrap material. And I'm going to carefully fuse down that fusible fleece by just heating it up from the back. All right, so I have the fusible fleece attached to the lower gusset panel. Now let's work on the front panel, which I had to get a little creative with. So I'm gonna flip this over, take the lining off and then center the fusible fleece on the back here. And like I said, I have this hole over here, which was an accident. So hopefully I can just, I can just fuse that in there and it'll be okay. Then once again, I'm going to fuse this from the back with a pressing cloth, which is just a scrap piece of quilt cotton. All right, I think that's going to work. And finally, I'm going to fuse the fusible fleece cut on the back of the exterior panel A. And for the sling strap connector, I'm actually not going to fuse the fusible fleece on. I'm just going to insert that in later. So if you want to wait to fuse it, or if you want to wait to add it, you can wait or you can fuse it on now. Uh, but I'll show you why I wait once we get to this step. Okay. The next prep step I want to do is just marking midpoints and marking points that the pattern suggests. So you can see on our pattern piece G, we have midpoints going along the long edges. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those. And then I'll have to mark more of these once I, once I cut this in half. If you want to cut this in half now, you can. You can see you're going to cut just right along the center here. But I'm going to wait until a little bit later. But for now, I am going to mark midpoints on the long edges of both pattern piece Gs. And now let's mark the midpoint on the top and bottom of both of our pattern piece Es. Again, I'm always just folding it in half. And then I'm using my scissors to cut a teeny tiny triangle right at that fold. And now for the back panel, you're going to want the midpoints on the top and the bottom, but then you're going to want these gusset seam points, which are not side midpoints. So for this, I'm going to use the pattern piece to help me mark everything by just lifting it up and marking right where those lines are. And then after I mark them with my pen, I do then still go ahead and clip them because when you clip it with your scissors, it allows you to see the midpoint on both sides, whether this is right side up or wrong side up, I'll still know where those those marking points are. And with the back panel and the front panel, you really only need to do it to one, either the exterior or the lining. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that with the front panel now. And then for pattern piece B, we're just gonna mark the midpoints on the top and bottom edges. I know this takes a bit of time, but it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches later. It just makes it so much easier to put all this together later, having all these points marked. And then just continue marking the midpoints as they're marked on the pattern pieces. So now let's start with the back slip pocket. So take an exterior cut and a lining cut, and we are going to lay them right sides together. Grab some clips and clip along the top straight edge. And now let's sew along this top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have the sewn clip, the corners off, so you're not cutting any of the stitching, you're just cutting the material like a little 45 degree angle. There we go. Now we're going to 
flip this so that the panels are wrong sides together. And you can press this with an iron if you'd like, or you can press it with your fingers. It depends on material that you're using. Water resistant canvas does press really well with an iron, but I think I can just use my fingers for this. And I'm going to line up all the edges. So the folded top edge, and I'm gonna line up the sides and the curved bottom, and I'm gonna clip together. So now we're going to baste the sides and the bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance, and then we're gonna top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then a quarter inch below that eighth of an inch. All right, once you have that sewn, grab your back panel A, exterior panel, and then your slip pocket you just made. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up on the bottom edge of that back panel, just like that. So I always like to match up the midpoints on the bottom first, and then just line it up to the top here. The top edge of your pocket is not going to meet up with that little clip you have here for the gusset. It's going to go above it. There are marking lines for it on the pattern piece. I don't worry too much about it. I'm just laying it flat. But if you wanna make sure it lines up perfectly, use the marking on the pattern piece for that. Okay, now we're just gonna base this in place at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with my pattern placement here. I don't do pattern placement well. If you've seen it oh, so many times, like the main print would be right under here under the pocket. I'm not good at this, but I'm pretty pleased with this one, so. Someone take a picture so I don't forget about this. All right, you can put this to the side now. Now grab your remaining back slip pocket B panels. And we're gonna lay these right sides together. So use those midpoint marks to help you line it up as perfectly as you can get it. And then we're just gonna clip around the bottom and the sides. So you do not have to clip along the top edge because we do not want to sew that. So now we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the top where you start and stop. Once you have this sewn, go ahead and trim down the seam allowance in half all the way around. Just the sides and the bottom, wherever you sewed. Trim the seam allowance in half there. Now flip this pocket right side out and poke out those corners, push out the seam. If you wanna iron this, go ahead and do that. I think I will actually. That'll help. So the thing about water resistant canvas is that when it gets hot, it gets very loose and it expands and kind of like bubbles up. So you'll see once I heat this up and remove the iron, it just kind of pops back up. But while it's cooling, if I put, you know, something heavy on it, like a ruler or anything, or if I just rub it with my fingers like this while it's cooling, it'll cool nice and crisp and flat. However, if you heat it up again, it will then once again kind of expand. So we're going to do that. We're gonna just kind of rub it with our fingers. So you can see, I'm just gonna get this seam hot like this, just one bit at a time. And then not while it's super hot, but once it starts cooling down, I'm just gonna kind of push it down with my fingers and it gets nice and flat. So I'm just gonna go around all the sewn edges doing this. Just trying to flatten out the seam. All right, once that's pressed, grab some of your binding whether you're using the cotton woven binding or if you're using the waterproof canvas or water resistant canvas or water resistant Oxford, <laughs> lots of different options. And if you can open it, goodness gracious, how do I open this thing? All right, and then just cut off a piece of your binding that is longer, uh, longer by about two inches or so. so I'm just kind of eyeballing it because we don't want to leave these ends raw. So I'm going to take my binding and the first thing I want to do is fold it wrong sides together, long sides together. And that's going to make it a lot easier to center this and make sure it's, you catch the front and the back when you're sewing it on. Once it's folded like that, then just take the edge over here and about three eighths of an inch or so, just fold it back the short edge and then refold it in half like that. And if you really want to make sure it looks okay. You can kind of clip off the corners just like this so it's like a little arrow pointing kind of like that and then fold it back down and that way you don't have those corners peeking out so then i refold it in half along the long edges and then i'm just going to wrap it around this top corner of the raw edge of my pocket and add a clip and then i'm going to attach the entire top edge to my pocket just like that making sure i'm wrapping it around both 
both of the raw edges on my pocket. And if you need to use double-sided tape here, go ahead and do that. If you want to glue this, you can do that. All right. So you can see I have a good amount left over here all the way on the right. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit because I don't need that much hanging over. But then I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to mark on the bottom edge of my binding where the pocket meets. And then I'm going to clip down these corners a little bit. And then I'm going to fold down wrong sides together, the short edge right where that mark is and then wrap it around that top edge again. So now it should be folded in on both sides over here. You could just leave it raw because I mean it is raw right here too, but it looks nice if it's folded in. So now I'm just gonna stitch along the bottom edge of this binding at a eighth of an inch seam allowance, just top stitching it in place. Once you have that binding stitched down, make sure you have the back stitched as well. And then if you have any little loose threads, go ahead and melt them down with a lighter. Now you're gonna grab your back pocket lining panel and we're going to, let's mark the midpoint on the top edge of our little slip pocket here. Not with scissors though, because <laughs> this is finished. So you'll wanna grab some sort of like an air erasing marker and mark the midpoint right on the top like that. And if you don't have the midpoint marked on the top of your lining panel, go ahead and do that. I forgot. So now measure down two and a half inches from that top midpoint mark and then line up your slip pocket, centering it two and a half inches down. And just kind of take a, take a look, make sure it all looks pretty straight. This is where I like to grab some tape and tape this pocket down so I don't have it moving around on me before I go to the sewing machine. So now I'm gonna top stitch this pocket in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance going from one top edge to the other. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, you can set this to the side now. So now let's work on the ring tabs. I'm gonna grab my little rectangle strip here and I'm just gonna fold it wrong sides together, long sides together. And then I'm gonna open it back up and I have that nice crease line there. I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and just run my double-sided tape right along that center line. And then you can remove the paper. And then fold the long edges up to meet that center crease as best you can. Go. One side and do the other side as well. So both of the long raw edges are coming together on the back. And remember you're folding them wrong sides together. If you wanna iron this, you can do that. Just give it a good press, put over. And now I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna top stitch along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once this is prepped, we're just gonna cut this into two inch long pieces. So just measure out two inches and just cut, cut, cut. And if you have the full strip like I do, you should end up with five. Now grab your D-rings and your five little tabs here if you're doing five like I am. And then with the wrong side, which has those raw edges still, you're gonna wrap it around that straight part of your D-ring and then just add a clip. Do this for all five of them. Now let's just take each of these to the sewing machine and stitch along these raw edges at about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so now let's just keep one of those little D-rings and you can put the rest to the side. Now we're gonna work on the sling strap connector. So grab one of your exterior pieces and lay it right side up and then grab your little D-ring and line up the raw edge with the midpoint on the top of your sling strap connector. And I'm just gonna quickly baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's in place, grab the other strap connector exterior piece and lay it right side down so that the D-ring is now sandwiched in between them. And line up all the corners and all the edges and clip together. We're gonna leave the bottom edge open. So clip along the top and the sides. Now let's sew along the sides and the top at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving the bottom open and make sure you backstitch along the bottom edge here. Once that's sewn, let's just clip off the corners. So just go around clipping all the corners down, all four of them. All right, now gently reach inside and pull that D-ring so that it's right side out. Depending on your material, this could be a little tricky, it could be easy. Vinyl makes it a little bit trickier, so I kind of roll it out and then slowly pull on the D-ring. Don't, don't yank on the D-ring too much because you can still rip it out of there, so we don't want to do that. So now I'm going to grab my turning tool and I'm just going to gently poke out these corners. 
very carefully. If you have anything that's too pokey, you could just rip right through your material and that is not the goal. So be very gentle as you turn out these corners. So now I'm just gonna kind of finger press and roll out these sides. If you're using material that can be ironed, you can iron this to flatten it out really nicely. We don't actually top stitch this. If you'd like to, you definitely can, but you don't have to. I think it actually looks kind of nice not top stitched, but I do wanna kind of force it to lay a little bit flatter. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this fusible fleece just inside like that. And I find that I oftentimes have to trim it down just a bit. So I'm just gonna shave off a little bit on the sides, just so it'll fit in there. I'm not fusing it or anything like that. So once the clips have helped, I'm just gonna open this up. I'm just gonna slide this in. And the reason I didn't fuse it on to begin with is because I didn't want any more bulk in the seams. Sometimes it can be difficult to really get the fusible fleece exactly where it needs to go. And so it ends up in the seams and I just didn't want that. So I'm gonna reclip all this together because I do want it to stay in place while I attach the snap. Okay, so now grab your back panel and your little sling strap connector and then you can use your template here if you'd like. And what I end up doing is actually just folding it down along the top dashed mark like that and then lining it up with my sewn piece here. And then grab a marking tool and I just poked a hole right where the snap fastener marking is. So I can just put my pen through that hole and remove it and now I have a dot marked on my strap connector. I'm again going to, I'm just reclipping because I don't want anything twisting around. So now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole through all layers of this strap connector at that marked dot. Make sure it goes entirely through. And now take your strap connector and we're going to lay it on top of the back panel so the raw edge matches up with the top raw edge of the back panel. Use those midpoint marks to line it all up so that it's centered, it's not crooked, it's nice and straight. And then use that hole that you have in the connector and a marking tool again, and just make a mark on your back panel, just like that. And if you'd like, you can put a little extra piece of like deco light or something like that back here to reinforce that snap position. I think just the fusible fleece and the water resistant canvas is enough. I'm gonna punch a hole right where I mark that dot. There we go. Now all we have to do is install our snap. So I'm gonna grab my dies and I'm gonna install the female part of the snap on the sling strap connector. So I'm gonna grab the die set that goes with that. The bottom die is the one that looks like a little bowl. The top die has like a little kind of short nub on it. Screw that in. If you have a preference on which side of this is the side you're gonna see when it's closed, think about that now. Uh, that side's going to get the cap, which is just a little disc like that. It goes through the hole. And on the other side, you have a donut piece and that's gonna go right over that prong that went through the hole and then lay this cap side down and press. There we go, now we have that part done. So now let's install the die set for the male side. So the bottom die is very pokey, the top die has like a little divot in it. The male side has two pieces, one that's like a little bit longer, one's a little bit shorter. The longer one goes through the back of the material through the hole and the shorter one goes over that prong and then just press it in place. There we go. Now just make sure you test it out. Make sure it all looks right. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? I love it. So now with it snapped in place, line up the top edges and the midpoint marks and let's just go base this down at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, if you're making the backpack option, grab two more D-rings and then also your back panel template and line up the template over your back panel that you've been working on. And you'll see you have these little ring tab markings over here. You're gonna wanna just transfer those to the back panel. So I'm just using my air erasing marker once again, and I'm just transferring those marks down here so I know where they are. And then grab one of our D-rings, and with the metal D-ring going in towards the center of the bag, we're going to just line up the corners of our tab between those marks that we just made, and clip in place. And I'm gonna do this on both sides because again, I am doing the backpack version. If you're doing a sling version, then you're just gonna add one wherever you decide you want it to go. So now I'm gonna base both of these down at a quarter inch seam allowance. 
Okay, so we have our back panel exterior, our back panel lining, and now let's take them and lay them wrong sides together and clip together around all of the edges. And once you have the two panels clipped together and lined up, let's baste along all the edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, the back panel is complete. Let's set this to the side. So now let's work on the front panel. Go ahead and grab your pattern piece and line it up over your front panel. And this is only if you're doing that front base. If you're not using the front base, then just ignore this step. But I am, so I'm gonna line this up and you see we have a baseline here. I wanna mark the two edges of that baseline on my panel. So then grab a straight edge and a fabric marking tool and just draw a straight line connecting those points. And then grab your base panel and lay it right side down so that the long straight edge is lining up on the bottom right at that mark. So the whole panel is above that line you just drew, but the straight edge is matching up with that line. Now I'm just gonna use clips to hold it on either side. You could also use tape if you'd like here. But now we're going to sew along this bottom edge right here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you find it helpful, use a ruler and mark that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and just sew over that marked line. Once that's sewn in place, pull down that accent panel so that the midpoints meet on the bottom here and then just line up the raw edges and just use some clips here to clip it all together. So now we're gonna top stitch along this folded edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can do a second row of top stitching a quarter of an inch below it and then also base down the bottom and side curved bits at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, now that accent is in place, let's work on the zipper. So if you're using zipper tape, it should be cut to seven inches long and add your zipper pull. And let's go to the sewing machine and just quickly stitch over the ends of our zipper tape so we don't have to worry about losing our zipper pull. Now let's grab your front zipper pocket template and one of the lining pieces and poke out the hole on all the corners of the zipper box. So boom, 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 boom. Just use your stiletto or something and poke out the holes and then grab your lining piece and lay it wrong side up. Grab your template lay it on top of your lining piece, lining up all the edges, and then grab a marking tool and just poke, poke through those holes with your marking tool. So you're just transferring these dots to the back of your lining panel. All right, and then use a straight edge to connect all four of those dots. I don't know if you can see it, but I have two long lines connecting the dots and two short lines. So I have a nice little rectangle here. Now grab your exterior front panel and lay it right side up. Take your pocket panel and lay it right side down. And we want to center the lining pocket and lay it half of an inch down from the top edge, right sides together. If it's easier, grab some tape and just tape these pieces together. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're just gonna stitch right over the long and short edges of this rectangle box right here. All right, once you have that sewn on, just flip it over and make sure it is in that opening on your fusible fleece. Looking good. So now I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm just going to mark a midpoint line going down the center of this lengthwise. And then I'm going to mark from the corner of the box in to meet that middle line. So I'm gonna do this on both sides so I have like a little triangle. Do this for both of the short edges. Now grab your seam ripper and just rip right along that center line, just enough for you to grab your scissors and then continue cutting along that center line until you get to the tip of your triangle and then veer off along those diagonal edges until you meet the corner. I'm gonna do this for both sides of this little pocket here. All right, so now we have a nice opening here. So we're gonna just push our pocket through that opening and bring it to the back so it's wrong sides together. And I am going to grab my iron and press this. So in pressing this, I like to press from the front carefully. And I can do this because I'm using water resistant canvas and water resistant canvas can press just fine from the front. So I'm just gonna flatten out one of the long edges first with my fingers so it's the way I want it. And I'm only working on this long edge. I'm not worried about the rest of it. And then I'm gonna grab the iron and just go over that one section carefully. And then as it cools, I'm just gonna push it down with my fingers so it stays nice and flat. So I'm gonna do this with the other long edge. Press it down once again, making sure my iron does not touch that vinyl down there. 
let it cool for just a moment and then press it down with my fingers to get it to stay. All right, once we have this ready to go, you can flip it over. This is how it should look on the back. This is how it should look on the front. Now grab your zipper and we're gonna add some double-sided tape along both long edges, right along the edge. So don't let this tape get too close to the teeth. We want it right on the edge and add this to both long edges of your zipper tape. Now, when the zipper closes, I want it going up. So think about that now. We wanna lay it like this. So the zipper closing goes up. We can rotate this if easier. And I'm just gonna do one side at a time. So I'm gonna take this paper off of this side of my zipper tape. And then I'm gonna center this over my zipper. And so you wanna make sure the teeth are running along the center of the opening. All right, I'm gonna flip it over and make sure you have enough overhang on the short edges as well. We don't want it to be too short. We need to make sure we catch it when we sew it. So this is how it looks so far. So now I'm just gonna lift up the other side and gently pull off the paper from that double-sided tape. And then flip the panel back down, make sure your zipper pull is pulled out and just press this down. And the nice thing about this double-sided tape, it's not too sticky. So if you need to pull it all out and redo it, it's not hard to do. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all four edges of this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure you're catching the zipper ends on the short edge over here. If you like, you can back stitch over these short bits as well, just to really make sure that that zipper uh, doesn't pop out at any point. All right, that is one cute little zipper, isn't it? Now let's flip this over. So we're looking at the back panel with the zipper and take your remaining line piece and you're gonna lay it right side down so it's right sides together with the lining panel you already attached. Use your clips to clip this together. And everything might not line up exactly because when we make pockets like this, it does kind of like warp the fabric a little bit, sucks it in, makes it a little bit smaller than it used to be. So that's okay if it doesn't. Just do your best to line up all the corners and all the edges. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine with the exterior panel right side up and we're going to flip it out of the way while we sew along all four edges of our lining panels at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you are not sewing through this back panel at all. We're just pulling it out of the way and just going around sewing all the lining panels. Okay, now I'm gonna add a bag tag. I don't know if I want this color. I might change the color. Yeah, I'll do a pink. So our bag tag, I'm gonna put it here. I'll tell you where I'm centering it. Let me put some double-sided tape on the back of it first. And let's see, I'm gonna have it. So the bottom edge is a quarter inch above the fold of our contrast panel over here and the far right edge is one inch from the right side of our material. That's where I'm going to lay my bag tag. So now before you sew on this bag tag, don't do what I did last time, which is sew through the pockets. So move the pocket out of the way and then you can sew down your bag tag or if you have a metal one, install it like that. Just don't install it through the pocket, but I'm gonna top stitch around all four edges at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once we have this front panel all ready to go, grab your remaining lining panel and you're gonna lay this front panel and the lining panel wrong sides together, lining up all of the corners and edges and then just clip together. Once these are clipped wrong sides together, let's take it to the sewing machine and just baste along all the edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. I just cannot tell you how pleased I am with my pattern placements today. <laughs> oh, I hope it all turns out at the end because this never happens, this never happens. Okay, so your front and back panels are done. Let's set them to the side. So now grab your zipper gusset panels and we're going to cut them in half lengthwise. So you can fold it, you can measure it however you want. We just need to cut these in half right down their centers lengthwise. All right, so I have my lining cut down and I have my exterior cut down. So I usually like to cut my zipper tape just a little bit longer than it needs to be. So mine's about an inch or so longer, but I'm gonna take both my zipper pulls and add them to my zipper tape. And I'm gonna add one to each side of the tape so that they're going in towards the center. So that way, once they come together, they're like this. Once they open up, they open. When they come together, they close. There we go. So grab one of your exterior zipper gusset pieces and lay it right side up. If you haven't already, let's mark the midpoint on our zipper tape. It's just gonna make it easier to attach everything. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and just make sure you mark the midpoint on both sides of your zipper tape. And if you are clipping your zipper tape like I am for those midpoint marks, you do wanna make sure you grab a lighter and just melt down right where you clipped because those clip marks could fray over time. And by melting it, we're just like sealing it in. We're just making those plastic threads come together and seal them in. 
So take your exterior zipper gusset, lay it right side up, and then take your zipper and lay it right side down, matching up the midpoint marks, and then just clip these together. And now let's baste down the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have this basted down, grab one of your lining zipper gussets and lay it right side down over the back of the zipper. And make sure you're lining it up with the edge of the exterior, not with the edge of the zipper if your zipper is longer like mine. This is where those midpoint marks are also really helpful. So now I'm gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once those are sewn together, let's press the panels away from the zipper. So the two panels are gonna come wrong sides together. And you can iron this if you'd like. What I like to do is line up the long edges. So I'm matching up the midpoint mark first, and then I'm gonna match up the two corners. I'm not worried so much about it being pressed by the zipper just yet. I find with these skinnier zipper gussets, if I do this, it's a little easier. So I'm just gonna clip along the raw long edges, just lining them up. Now I can kind of pull on my zipper a little bit, and finger press down right next to the zipper teeth. There we go. So now I'm gonna go top stitch right along this edge by the zipper teeth at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now we're just gonna repeat that with the other side. So grab your other exterior zipper gusset and lay it right side up. Take your zipper and lay it right side down, matching up those midpoint marks and clip together. And now let's baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now lay your zipper wrong side up, so we're looking at the back of it, and take your remaining lining gusset and lay it right side down. Just matching it up with that top edge and clip together. And now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now let's press the panels away from the zipper once again. And just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna line up the raw edges and clip those together first and then I'll press down the seam by the zipper. Okay, so now I'm gonna go top stitch right along this edge by the zipper teeth at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna baste down all of the remaining raw edges on the outside and the short edges, also at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, zipper gusset is good. I'm going to trim down my zipper tape so it's all the same size now. Now we're gonna grab the remaining two D-rings and we're going to line them up so they're centered on the zipper teeth on the short edges of our gusset with the hardware pointing in towards the center. Let's do this for both sides. These are going to be the D-rings for the crossbody. And now we're just gonna base these down at about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now let's finish up this gusset. So take your bottom gusset and lay it right side up and then take your zipper gusset and you're gonna lay it right side down and let's match up the short edges. So let's start with the left side first, bring this over and they should be the same size. If one is a little bit wider than the other, that's okay. We're gonna still sew them together and then you can trim, trim it down just along the edge to line them up a bit. You don't have to trim the whole panel of either one of these, just where they line up. There we go. Make sure your D-ring isn't folded down. Make sure it's still out of the way. We don't want to accidentally sew over that. And now let's sew along this clipped edge right here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have one side done, let's just pull the zipper gusset over to meet the other side of the bottom gusset and line up those short edges and then just clip them together and let's sew along this short edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so once you have the exterior done, we're gonna repeat that with the lining. So take your lining and have your zipper so it's lining side up and take your lining bottom gusset and lay it right sides together with the lining and match up these short edges. And I'm just gonna clip both of them at once this time. Here we go. And once again, we're gonna sew along these short edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And now just cut down these corners at a 45 degree angle. This just helps reduce the bulk. 
And now flip this out so the bottom gusset lining and exterior are wrong sides together. There we go. And now what we want to do is we want to go along the entire length of the bottom gusset, clipping them wrong sides together. And so you want to straighten it out for each bit. So as you go around, just straighten out the little one or two inches you're looking at. Don't let it stay curved or else you'll find that you have excess lining material. You're going to be like, what do I do with that? So do this for both sides of the bottom gusset. Now let's go sew along each of these long clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. This is how your gusset should look now. And before we move on, let's just top stitch on the bottom part of the gusset right below the D-ring at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do this on both sides. Alrighty, now we have three pieces, the front, back, and the middle. We've got to put it all together. So let's start with this back panel right here. Lay that right side up and check your gusset to make sure you have all your midpoint marks. I don't think I have it on my bottom gusset. So I'm going to match up the seams for my gusset and fold so I can find the midpoint on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna clip that on both sides. So with my back panel right side up, I'm gonna take my gusset and lay it exterior right side down, line up the zipper midpoint with that top edge of my back panel and clip together. We'll clip there first. And then make sure you flip this all out so the exterior is down and then the midpoint on the bottom of my bottom gusset i'm going to match that up with the bottom edge of my back panel and clip those together all right so now we're going to deal with the sides here so where the seam is between your zipper gusset and your bottom gusset that's going to line up with that clipped edge on the side here so you might have to pull things away but you're not going to line it up with the top of your pocket it's going to be below the top of that back pocket so find that marking for the gusset that you made and line up the seam with that mark and clip together. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Once I have those done, I'm going to rotate this so I'm looking at the lining side of the back panel. And I'm going to go around lining up all the edges and I'm tucking in this back panel like a bowl when I get to those corners. And if you need to, which probably will, clip into the corners of the gusset so that the gusset can spread out and you can just tuck everything in without having a bunch of pleating. So I'm just gonna push this in there and spread out the gusset so that it will lay flat. So I'm gonna do this for all four corners. All right, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna lay it gusset wrong side up just like this. And we're gonna sew around all the edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Keep scissors nearby. If you're having a really hard time getting the gusset to meet up with the edge of the back panel, just clip into the corners a little bit, and gently move it out. I find using a stiletto is really helpful here. Once you have that sewn, it is recommended that you turn it out. Just make sure it looks okay. And also to spoil the surprise a little bit because it looks so good. Oh yeah, that looks so good. So if you find you have any pleats or any areas that need to be addressed, you can always just unpick that one bit and then re-sew over it, smooth it out. Look how cute that's looking. Oh, this is a favorite. This is gonna be a new favorite. I love it. Okay, if you wanna add your binding right now, you can definitely do that. I like to add it all in one go at the end, so I'm going to skip the binding for just a moment, and I'm gonna grab my front panel, make sure that zipper's out of the way. I'm gonna just pull it down a little bit. And we're gonna lay the front panel right side up, take your gusset and lay it so that the gusset is exterior right side down, and just match up the midpoint marks. This one's a little bit trickier to do. You might wanna do it with the back side of your front panel up because now our bag has a lot more structure. 
may want to open up this zipper too. I mean, you definitely, you definitely do want to open up that zipper, but it is easier to sew around the zipper gusset if the zipper is open. So now we're just going to line up the bottom edges and match up those midpoint marks and clip together. And then we're going to match up the gusset with the gusset mark that we made on our front panel. And then do this for both sides. And then once you have most of the straight bits clipped together, you're going to go to the corners and once again, just kind of clip a little bit into the gusset to help it spread out so that you can straighten out the front panel with the gusset. We don't want any rippling. I found that I did not have a problem with pleating or rippling along the corners of this. Now, that could just be because I have a lot more practice now. I've been, I've been making bags like this for quite a bit, so the more you do it, the better you're gonna be at it and the less challenging it's going to be. So, but I feel like these corners are good. I feel like the measurements for this are really good. The corners are really good. All right, once we have it all clipped, once again, we're going to sew this with the gusset lining side up. So you need to push this down. I know you wanna keep the structure, it looks amazing. You're gonna wrinkle it anyways. So just push this down, keep it out of your way. We don't care about this looking good. We need this to look good, right? Where we're sewing, that needs to look good. So we're gonna go around again at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just sewing all the way around. Use your stiletto and go slow. Now, if you want to turn the whole bag right side out to check everything, you can. I am going to uh, gonna live dangerously and just assume it all worked out. Now we want to add the binding. And so for binding like this, what I like to do is just grab a section of it and fold it in half, wrong sides together, long sides together. And I know it's, it's extra work, but it really does make sure that I catch both edges. And I'm just going to go down the line just pressing it with my fingers. So that way, whenever I wrap this around the edge of my material, you know, I could just tuck in the seam into that fold. And when I sew it, I know I'll catch the back. Okay, so I'll just do a little section of it and then I'll grab my bag and I can just wrap this around. I usually like to start on a side, usually on a straight side or something. I'm just gonna wrap it around the raw edges and I'm just gonna clip it. It's just like a little hug around those raw edges and clip it together. As you can see, my binding does not match my lining. If you use a binding color that is the same color as your lining material, you like won't even notice the binding. It's almost invisible. But I didn't have some pre-cut binding in this color and I did not feel like making my own, which you can. You can just use your lining material and cut strips that are one inch wide and I don't know, like a yard long, maybe a yard and a half. So I'm just gonna keep going down folding my binding and then clipping it onto my bag. All right, once you get towards the end, I cut the binding so it's just about an inch longer than where I started. And then just wrap it around where you began. If you wanna fold in the short raw edge, you can definitely do that. I don't, cause I'm tired. <laughs> all right, there we go. I think that's cute, I like that binding. So now we're gonna go around all the edges here and I'm just gonna sew it on at about between a quarter and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once you have it sewn on, just check the back and make sure you caught everything. It looks good. So at this point, it might look very sloppy, especially if you're using the water-resistant canvas or the water-resistant Oxford. Um, it might look very sloppy. Just go with it, just trust me, okay? Once you turn it out, you're not gonna, right now it looks like the exterior is not the exterior. So uh, we're gonna just repeat that with the other side now. All right, once you have the binding attached to the other side, once again, gusset side up if you prefer, if you find it easier to do, I don't think you would find it easier to sew it this way, but whatever works for you, I'm gonna do gusset side up and I'm just gonna sew this on between a quarter and a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
It's looking cute. So let's let's flip it right side out. I'm so excited about this. I hope everything <laughs> is correct. I'm always worried that like I sewed on my front or back panel upside down or something. Just reach in and work on poking out all those rounded corners. The binding is really nice. I know some of you guys don't like doing it, but I'm telling you the binding is like a skeleton and it just gives the best structure and shape to your bags. You don't have any of this loosey goosey, you know, top of the bag falling in on itself or anything like that. It's just, it's just perfect. I love it. Oh my goodness. Look at how stinking cute this bag is. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my goodness. It's so good. I love it. Okay. So now we just have to make the straps and we are done with the bag. All right. So determining strap length can be difficult. So typically when I make a crossbody strap, I like to make it, I cut my webbing so that it's 56 inches long. With this, I'm gonna make two straps and one of them can be used as a crossbody strap and then together they can be used as a backpack and one can just be used as a sling. So it's a little bit trickier because with the backpack straps, 56 inches long is just too long for this backpack. So I'm gonna cut my webbing down to 50 inches. I'm gonna have two cuts of webbing each of them are 50 inches. Now I'll tell you that's still pretty long for me, but I think on average it would be okay. If you know you're making this for somebody like a child or somebody who's just much smaller, I would suggest even cutting it down to like 46 inches long each or something like that. The nice thing about these straps though is that they are removable. So you're not stuck with them. If you have straps you wanna use for you know when you're wearing it then you can make straps for that and if you have straps you want to use for when your kids are wearing it you can make a separate set of straps for them so there's a lot of wiggle room here but i'm going to cut two strips of webbing each 50 inches long okay so i have my webbing i have my hardware i have my rivets i will not be sewing these straps i will be using rivets because that's much easier for me first thing as always is to melt down the raw edges of our strap because they do like to fray quite a bit we don't need that. I'm gonna grab my hole punch. I'm gonna take one strap and I will take one short edge of my strap and my slider and I'm just gonna insert it from the bottom of the slider up over that middle bar and then I'm gonna pull it through by about an inch or so and then I'm gonna fold under that raw edge by about half of an inch. I, I eyeball all this. I'm not measuring it and then I'm gonna make two holes here. Luckily I have this stripe running down the middle. So I usually do that. I usually just find something on the pattern to line up my holes with. I don't really measure them. You can if you want. There's lots of rivet tools out there. So once you have those holes punched, I'm just going to grab the rivets and snap them through. And the nice thing about rivets is you can, you just take them and snap them together and they stay together so I can set them all at once in a little bit. Now take your strap and Lay it so that it's folded edge, so the back side up. Keep it straight all the way. Grab a swivel hook, swivel side down, and thread it onto your webbing. Keeping your webbing straight. Fold your webbing in half, so the raw edge is now coming up to the side that has the fold over edge. Insert that up through the bottom of the slider, over the middle bar, and out the other side. So when I pull on this swivel hook, I have swivel hook sticking out right side of my slider and then this raw edge over here. Take a remaining swivel hook, thread it on so that the swivel is up, fold it over by about an inch, and then fold under that raw edge. There we go. And then just like before, by the slider, we're going to punch a couple holes here and then we'll use our rivets to snap them in place. And there you go, easy peasy crossbody strap. So I'm gonna do this with the other webbing and hardware as well. All right, once you have those rivets in there, now we just have to set them. So I have my die set for rivets. I'm just gonna insert that into my rivet press here. And then I'm just gonna go one by one, just pressing all these down and my straps will be done. All right, our straps are done. So you can use one of them as a crossbody strap or as a sling strap, I'm gonna show you. Or you can use both of them as a backpack strap. So if you wanted to use this as a crossbody strap, you'd go from this D-ring to this D-ring, easy peasy. For a sling, you're gonna unsnap this, put one of your swivel hooks up top there, 
And then another either on the right or the left, depending on how you like to wear your sling. And there you go, you have this cute little sling. Love it! Or you can wear it as a backpack, which I know a lot of people really like. So you just, again, add it to that top D-ring and then over here on the bottom. And then there you go. Easy peasy little backpack. One bag, three options. And look at my pattern placement, you guys. It looks so good, I'm so proud of myself. You know, I thought my first version of this bag was definitely gonna be my favorite version, but now I feel like this is my favorite version. It looks so good. Oh, look at that. I love to using the water resistant canvas for the exterior and the lining because that means I don't have to add any interfacing. And if you know me, I am, I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> I have a lot to do. Adding woven interfacing to pieces, it just takes a little bit longer. It looks amazing, but it just takes a little bit longer. And if I don't have to, then I'm gonna choose not to. This is just, this is perfect. So if you want a quicker bag that's fairly simple, but looks extremely professional, water resistant canvas. You can't go wrong. This just, I mean, look at this. Look at this, it looks so good. So I hope you love making this bag as much as I do. This is probably one of my new absolute favorite patterns. I've already had a few people messaging me on Instagram and on Facebook telling me that they've been making these bags and they have been selling like hotcakes at local arts and crafts festivals. So if you're somebody who likes to make these bags as gifts or to sell at local events, this is a very, very beautiful design. And I think it's a very flattering bag on everybody. If you see me on social media, you know that I don't particularly love wearing mini backpacks. However, if I can wear a mini backpack as a crossbody or as a sling, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. That's how I prefer to wear them. So the fact that this bag has so many options for everybody, I love that. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Candy Powder. You're just the best. So I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys.